the United States, States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Gary. Roll call, Bud. Present. Byron. Here. Alan Robbins. Present. Janet. Tamitha. Here. Leslie. Here. Ken. Present. Alan Michelson. Here. Jim. Here. Matt. Here. Thank you. Okay, you've had time to read the minutes. If there's no questions or corrections on the minutes, we need a motion to accept them. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, and you have the bills. Uh, Gary put an addition on the bills this afternoon. You, think it's a, you want to just say what that is, Gary? Sure. Uh, with the amount that we added on this afternoon, brings the total to $49,000. If you're wondering why that went up so high, it was road work we had done last fall. Guy wondered why we didn't pay him, it was because he hadn't sent the bill. Mm -hmm. so. I move that the bills be paid from an appropriate account as published and amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay, I like to take a minute every May to remember, I mean, every March. <laughs> to remember the former mayor of Barbara Beach, Leonard English, who, uh, as most of you know, or maybe you don't know, uh, actually made St. Patrick's Day a legal holiday in Barwood Beach. When we merged in 1998, we moved that over to Chippewa Lake. Um, last year, his son Mickey came and gave us the Barwood Beach sign that's up there that Len English had made with shamrocks on. Uh, and I think that that question is in trivial pursuit about where it's a legal holiday. And we had a copy of the congressional record, but when people ask what we do, we do nothing. <laughs> we don't have a parade, we take it for the fourth, and we don't have any business, we don't stop mail, but it is a legal holiday in our village. So, Leslie, it sounds like something you've run with. I actually looked up the ordinance last year. And I shared, think you're the one that found congressional record. Uh, yeah, I found it last year. Too. I'll share it again. It actually came up today. I shared it on my Facebook. When this first started, there was uh, <coughs> news reporters from, well, I know that Obi Sheldon, whatever station he was from, he came out to the village inn, which is not in the village. Right. So, <laughs> but they still had green beer. But Originally, anyway. we were the only. Um, municipality but now there's more have made it a legal holiday yes. Yes. Huh. anyway lift one for len on sunday Doesn't wherever you find office, open uh, change their postage mark he had a he had a yeah he had a post there was some kind of postmark i have some well, yeah, yeah the post office will postmark the envelopes from chippewa lake on that day with a different stamp yeah, they used to. They used to, I know. So nobody knows to ask for that, but and it's great. Okay, we will now go to safety. No trivia. Okay. Uh, we have Deputy R. Hay with us. There's been a, uh, several changes in the life of our deputies and other people at uh, Collect Corporate. Uh, came. Uh, Deputy King is um, is he retiring or he's not okay? Well, uh, Deputy King, King has pulled his pull off of doing duty at Chippewa. He's been with us for a long time, uh, many years, and uh, is a solid twenty-five hour a week person or a month person. Um, Deputy Hart, as we mentioned last month, uh, we knew that was coming down. They put the word out. They had three people uh, respond that were quality individuals, and they selected one uh, deputy, Matt Ryan, Lyon, Mike, Mike Lyon, Lyon. I'm sorry, and he's a canine officer as uh, uh, K and ten years prior to that PD, and he lives in the area. Maybe he's in Chippewa Road. Chippewa Road. So he's nearby uh, as we have. Uh, 
and that will take place already. I believe. Yep. Came on work March first. Uh, came at corporate, if you will. Uh, Captain Kevin Ross is retiring at the end of this month. Is he old enough to retire? He's my kid. <laughs> this is his second retirement. How old is he? Retired as fifty-five ish, but he retired as a uh, sergeant with us when he was fifty and worked the last five years as a captain. So he's just going on to uh, be a probation officer at the Diamond Uni. Yeah, so he was well known in the village. Uh, Mayor Dodaro going from. Well, he grew up with the kids. Like yes. Yeah, so. Strengths yeah. like Bobby Duker, people like that. People. Uh, that retirement takes place at the end of the month. Uh, the new captain has been uh, announced as Chris Conwell, C O N W I L L. Jimmy, you want to give us a little background? He came over with the sheriff. He's been a captain with us, a part time captain uh, since the sheriff came over, and then uh, he's taking Captain Ross's position of all the operations that the patrol detective bureau uh, patrol anything like that uh, he's taking over that duties full time same job as captain ross did. i'll probably send a, an email to captain ross thanking him for his service to us and oh yeah at the same time uh, give a welcome to uh, uh, captain tom uh, so we'll get into the details um, you know, uh, targeted hours this month were 80, 84 hours for work, so we're doing fine there. 591 miles on the cruisers, uh, estimated gas use of 32.8 gallons. Hard work 36, Yarborough 25, King 23, for a total of 83. Uh, deputy activities, uh, I'll read for February, uh, one burglary. One animal complaint, dog barking or loose canine. One disturbance bite. Three squads or ambulance. One juvenile complaint. One theft larceny. 111 extra patrols. 66 victor watches. One suicide threat. Suspicious persons and vehicles two. Suspicious persons one. Building checks three. Non-fire emergency call ser service call one. Fraud, identity fraud, one. Repossession of a vehicle, one. Traffic stops, two. Unconscious, fainting, unresponsive, one. Welfare checks, three. For a total of 203. Uh, any questions from the audience or council? I wanted to thank uh, Deputy Harvey for uh, screening the applicants for uh, new deputy and we got a good one. Uh, so I think uh, we're doing real well going into uh, the summertime and probably looking for somebody to fill in on a temporary basis. Uh, we'll see if needed. If needed, three of us should be able to cover it, but. Yeah, we'll do the best we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have uh, Chief Brian Cavanaugh with us. So, Chief, if you want to give the report. Yes, sir. We had uh, 49 calls uh, for the month of February. Uh, four were in Chatham, one was in Marysville Township, 29 in Lafayette, two in Montville Township, uh, Chippewa Lake had six, uh, Glory Glens had six, and uh, Loda had one. 65% uh, were EMS calls. That's for fire and other related calls. Our average turnout time is two minutes and 11 seconds. Uh, and year to date is two minutes eight. On scene, uh, we get there in about five minutes and 36 seconds. Um, we gave mutual aid to Chatham four times. We gave mutual aid to Montville twice. And we gave mutual aid to Lodi once and we received mutual aid in uh, Chippewa Lake once and Lafayette Township one time this past month. Um, we began our fire department citizen advisory committee on February 7th. We had a great turnout and wonderful discussion on the state of the fire department, how it operates, and the department is concerned moving forward. Our next meeting will be held on March 21st, and that week, Mr. Robbins will be in attendance. We attended the EMA groundbreaking ceremony in Chippewa Lake on February 22nd. We will be assisting them in storing equipment while they're building a new, or they're building a new facility um, currently. And our pancake breakfast will begin uh, every Sunday in April. 
Uh, looking forward to seeing you all there. Uh, Kelly Parker continues to do outstanding work in our firefighter one course. Andrew Berger, Alex Thomas, Allison Jadlos finished their fire officer one and they're going on fire officer two course at the University of Akron. Uh, myself, Cody Uniac, Christian Hall, and Ben Greg attended a three-day seminar on foundational leadership from the Iowa Fire Chiefs. Uh, the course is based up off of uh, John Maxwell's 21 Year Beautiful Walls of Leadership. It's a great course that provides wonderful insight to our leadership strengths and weaknesses. And Elizabeth Summers uh, completed her paramedic certification and is now a national registered paramedic. Uh, we've been notified to receive 5700 for the uh, training reimbursement grant from the state fire marshal. We've been awarded a $500 to the Tarma board grant and a $1,000 to the Tarma police and firefighter grant. And we'll be applying for the TC Energy grant this month for gas detection equipment and safety equipment. We also applied for uh, AFG grant, which is assistance to firefighter grants. Uh, it's a joint grant with uh, the village of Seville. So myself and Chief Cypher work together on that grant and we're hoping that comes through uh, $28,000 for each of us and turn out here. So cross your fingers. <laughs> uh, mutual aid uh, plan, which is our main business, has been updated. This has been an ongoing project for the past, past several months. Uh, this will enable us to be, uh, provide the best possible outcome for our larger incidents. We installed field ops on our apartment iPads. This will reduce radio traffic and assist in managing larger incidents. Our tanker pump has now been fixed. Two valves need to be completely replaced and one valve is rebuilt. And Jessica White, a great paramedic firefighter too, uh, she submitted her resignation. Uh, she's been a member of the fire department for four years. She's moving with her fiance to Arkansas and heading off to physician assistant school in the uh, fall. So she's been an outstanding member of this department. She'll be greatly missed. We've had five engagements, which is <laughs> very concerning to me. <laughs> you have engagements, you have weddings, then you have babies, <laughs> and then your availability starts to result. <laughs> But we just lost one. We interviewed Noah Gamble, an outstanding young man who was in my bill. He's a firefighter level one in EMT and he's completing his firefighter two this spring. He'll be attending paramedic school in the fall and uh, he's going to be a great firefighter, it seems like. So, and we're also interviewing two more candidates uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. We just interviewed one today and, uh, and uh, we have uh, another one out there as well. So, any questions for me? How many open slots are you trying to fill against right now? Uh, well, we're so we're trying to fill the gaps. So we have uh, our firefighter paramedics are all getting hired. So we just had one get hired in Wadsworth full time. So his hours just got cut drastically for us. Um, and then we just actually just this past Friday, I was notified another one got hired in Rocky River. So it's great for them, but it's unfortunate for us. We're we're like the we're like the training team or the uh for the for the double a baseball team and and they're going to the major leagues so they're going to still hang out with us and play but uh for how long we don't know that's the that's the trick is keeping them so we're going to keep them those two individuals are staying out of the apartment but uh they were our workhorses as i call them and uh now their hours are, are dwindling because they've got full-time positions elsewhere so um, that's kind of so we're always we're always building the roster up and, and building new medics and new firefighters just to have a good solid roster and keep those, those shifts still. So, is there any initiatives uh, <coughs> that you do train these people? You yeah. recruit them, you mm -hmm. educate them, you give them service. Yeah. And when they get hired away, do you get any compensation back? Well, we get the so if they go to firefighting school. And they get certified, we get that money back. That training reimbursement grant is exactly what that is. That fire marshal grant, I, I submit those education um, requirements, those credentials, and we get, we would get that money back. But uh, if they're paying on their own, it's we don't get the money back. A lot of them do pay on the paramedic school. They pay on their own, which is about anywhere between seven thousand and ten thousand dollars these days, unfortunately. But they're going to do that on their own and. Uh, we can't hold back from that, but but they are the nice thing is is we we try to have a nice good department and a good community. So I think they like working in Lafayette. It's kind of a it's a change of pace for some of them. So they kind of stay stay local and, and they got their start there. So they have some loyalty to the to the department, which is great. So. There's so much portability in your industry. It would really be interesting to see this guy kind of like the baseball game. 
mm -hmm. trade mm -hmm. for a minor leaguer, mm -hmm. you get some compensation back for the value mm -hmm. that you put into that person. Now, like, granted, some of them pay for their own schooling, but right. you give them a job, you give them training, you give them, yeah. you spend a lot of money to bring those people around. Absolutely. Right. But yes, this uh, this uh, young man we interviewed today, he's a he got hired on Putin Bay Fire Department when he was 17. He's a firefighter to EMT. Um, seems like a great individual. Uh, I called his chief today just to check and see what kind of a person he is. And the chief absolutely adores this kid. And uh, and uh, I'm like, well, I won't steal him completely. <laughs> like, can we share him? <laughs> that's kind of a that's kind of a game we play with each other. Like, we're gonna we're gonna share this individual, and he's gonna work weekends in Putin Bay and and give us some time down here. So that's kind of the trick we, we keep on playing and stuff. Yeah. It was interesting on the front page here of the 49 <clears throat> incidents this month, you know, 34 were in uh, daytime hours, 15 in the evening, mm -hmm. like roughly, uh, you yeah, two thirds, 70% of the uh, daytime activities. Is that, is that traditional or is that like cyclic? Um, I think it's cyclic, but it, I think it, it fluctuates. So when I, the numbers, you can never, you almost, you almost can't predict. Last month we had eight, or January we had 86 runs, and this month we had 49, and they're all over the place. So it just, it just depends on <laughs> the, the hours of the day, kind of. There is that daytime hours between 10 and 8 p.m. We have probably the most calls, and then after 8 p.m. It, it windows, but some nights we have three, two or three calls in the middle of the night, and some nights we have zero, so, yeah. And for the April breakfast, are they, um, are they you know, workers, helpers? Absolutely, we'll always, we'll always take anybody that wants to help uh, with pancakes or whatever, make bacon. I'm not sure exactly. The crepes. I don't know how to make crepes. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, Joe Fullerton in charge of that again? She is. I think so, yeah, part of it. Yeah, she is. Yeah, so the Firefighters Association kind of runs the whole thing. This will be my first run at it, so uh, pretty excited. Yeah, right. well, uh, this group's help. The Lions Club has offered help, and the community would help if you need it. So I appreciate that. Thank I'll you. I'll reach out to Joe. See okay. you. Thank, Thank you. Any questions for the chat? What are the hours for the pancake? What's that? Mean? What are the hours for your pancake breakfast? Um, eight to one. Eight to one. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Put me on the spot there. <laughs> yes, sir. April. All is, every Sunday in April. So Easter is on the thirty-first this month. So of March. So we don't have to skip skip a week for. <laughs> Easier. And it's not just pancakes, it's scrambled eggs and bacon and yeah. you know, crazy. That's good. Yeah. It's a good breakfast. Right. Very good. My kids absolutely love it. Spend a lot of money every year. <laughs> Last month you said something about trying to get a train schedule. Were you able to get any? I did not, but I was talking to some individuals about the train and we were looking into it. So I did not get any train schedules. Um, but there is, I, I've checked those tracks there and I haven't heard anything. Other than the normal, like one once a day, or I'm not sure exactly. It's kind of random, so yeah, they're know. there. They're not like they used to be right. a couple years ago, but they're definitely there. Yeah, uh, I'll look into it some more and I'll make sure I get back to you. Right? Okay, thank you. Justin. And a couple updates on the sign. <laughs> Let me tell you, guys. Thanks, guys, for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, All right. At least one or two activations of the sirens where people heard it. Uh, reached out to Janelle at dispatch. She, triggers them. she doesn't know anything. Reached out to Matt Sturgeon at EMA. EMA didn't know anything about it. They were, came back that maybe there was some activation of siren over by the recycle center. That's what it said on Facebook. Yeah, Somebody said that. I didn't know they had one there. So. I just the know we heard it here. It was it was faint, but it was enough that you heard it. Like I heard it inside my house, and I'm thinking, why are they running the siren at Wednesday at you know like like four two thirty? It was like a weird time. Yeah. too. It wasn't even. It didn't make sense. So we're going to start a new legend on the ghost of the siren and Heather Hedge. But uh, last month I reported that I'd reached out to Representative Sharon Bray <clears throat> through her. 
online communication through her website. I had not got a response back. So I called that office today, left the voice message, got a call back from a named Bree uh, Batona. And uh, we talked over what I was trying to get, and there's a pot of money out there. I thought it was under the, the representatives, but it's called the One Time Strategic Community Investment Funds. And it's controlled by Senator uh, Romachuk. And the due date on that is the 15th. They did forward the application this afternoon. And I will be following up with that. Um, when I explained to uh, Brie Petonio what we were going for, she was also going to make an effort to talk to the public, public safety committee of the state and see if there's possible findings there. So uh, a couple of... Um, Finally, a positive move there. She thought under that one time uh, strategic community investment funds, um, our, our ask is roughly $35,000, which is very small compared to the rest of the people. So she thought we would get a positive response. But uh, does anybody here know Senator Womanchuk at all? Okay. Dave, but over here. <laughs> yeah, it's actually. I might have heard his name. With the board of realtors, when we try to get a report from him, it's very hard to communicate with. I mean, yeah, Sharon Gray is, is my person that I have a liaison with, and then someone else is working on the check. They never have a report, basically. Yeah, she did give two, two other names inside of that, so they may be his administrative assistant. So I'll probably reach out to everybody just to make sure we get Probably here. about the time you. Get a grant to figure out a way to fix our siren. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's an old siren. <laughs> I'd like to think differently, but it needs to be in place. They had it not plugged in. That's all I have for safety. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anybody have anything else for safety? Okay, zoning. Jim? Okay, zoning reports for March. Uh, nine corporate path. Uh, as we talked a little bit last week or last month about the mortgage company that contacted us by um, email. Do you have any other correspondence with them, Alan? No, I've given them all the details that we have uh, and reports, and I haven't heard anything back. And I was going to—I was wondering, has anything been done there? Nothing's been done. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I had a neighbor uh, contact me the other day and asked how they could get a hold of them to buy it or something. Right. Or something. I said, well, there's an address that I think he's living at, so maybe you want to go and check that. But I haven't heard anything other than that, so nothing more on that. 227 Rustic Road. Um, Huntington Bank, did you say it was? Yeah, it's owned by Huntington Bank now. And I have a contact and we email, um, but I haven't heard from them since the last meeting. And they also have all the information they need to clean it up. And they were evicting uh, some residents there. And I think that should be done now. I can follow up with, with them and the mortgage company on Parkway Path. Okay. Nothing. Can you email me contact and Information and sure. Any, any There's nothing been done over there, obviously. Yeah. Um, okay, and then the last on the list was Chase and Briarwood. Uh, the contractor is going to be reworking the, the roof overhangs. Um, he's actually too close to the line, um, according to what it says actually. So he's working that out with the carpenters when he's uh, for permits, I have 24-002 at 156 Tether Hedge Drive, and that's a permit for a roof extension to cover the side deck. 24-003 at 192 Cottage Cove, that is a permit for a shed. And 24-004 at 585 Lake Road. <clears throat> That's not the right address. <clears throat> it should be 152 Heather Hedge. And that is um, a permit for a shed 
on concrete pad fence and purple oil and papers. So I will correct that and send it back out. My apologies. Um, and the last thing on my list I have is a very cheering for 224 Shadow Shore Drive. And the owner is present. Alan, would you like to? Okay, I will call this uh, zoning hearing with council acting as the Board of Zoning Appeals. Call it to order and ask uh, the owners present. Yes. Our zoning inspectors present. Is there anybody who is going to make a statement about this other than the owner? Anybody who wants to comment as a neighbor? Okay, would you raise your right hand? You swear the testimony you're about to give is true? I do. Okay, very good. Uh, Jim, if you will outline what the request is and the situation. I had, um, I had sent out plans, of, like um, elevation plans and things, so you can get a picture of it. But I also included with your report today the overhead site plan, which you had given measurements of setbacks and things for it. What we plan to do in this uh, project is going to be uh, he's adding a concrete area, patio, and he would like to cover it with a roof. And that roof is going to be 14 feet by 28 feet. And in doing that, um, the zoning code 401.3e states a minimum rear depth of 10 feet. So he will be encroaching that setback by eight feet. So what's the variance that's asked for? From 10 feet to eight, or two. Two feet. Yeah, 10 to two. And then this isn't enclosed, it's just roofed over? It's just a, I mean, right. It's just Jim, did you uh, notify all the adjacent name owners? I did. Just, did you hear back from anybody? I spoke with Lyle, who is the immediate adjacent where this roof is being built toward, and he said he had absolutely no problem with it. What's his name? Lyle Morris. And nobody's contacted you? No one else has contacted me. Okay. <clears throat> one couple, just um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on, I'm looking at this here. Mm -hmm. The uh, there's a fence there over here, so like that black. No. The fence line is, is the proper line. That's the and proper that line. separates my house from Lyle's house. When I looked at the fence, it butts up right to the corner of Lyle's house. Is yes. that his fence or your fence? My fence. So really all of that is fenced in. No way. It is fenced in. It is fenced in, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be enclosed, but it's fenced in. And the overhang, you didn't have any intent of uh, just uh, closing that in beyond draping the fabric or? No, no, keeping it open. The only thing that's going to be beyond what's built is the gutter. And actually, it shows that I'm two foot from the line. I'm actually going to be three foot from the line. And I'm going to have six inches of lot for my gutter. So I'm going to be two foot six with my gutter from the property. That's the plan. I have no other questions. Any other comments? Is there anything you want to add, Mr. Safko? No, no, I didn't know. No, it's pretty it's pretty cut and dry. The, the only thing that I'm gonna add is I put a gazebo up there every year. I cover it every year anyway, but it's just not attached to my house. And it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's <coughs> fabric and whatnot or whatever. So I'm just doing it to make it look better is basically what i'm doing the concrete patio is to help with the flow i get all of the flow from the street when we built that property on that, on that lot that used to be a swamp and we catch all the all the all the little wood water comes down and it comes to the ring my back patio and it still does it now um we do have a french drain we did install a sewer at the end which relieved a lot of that Every time it rains, I still have six to eight inches of water that flow through there 
in the gravel constantly. And the reason we put the concrete in is to have that get to the drain quicker. And these, with this overhang over it, it'll alleviate all that rain coming down into it, which will be tied into the storm. So I'm doing it to water in my own yard, plus make it look better. Because I'm gonna put up the temporary gazebo like I do every year if I don't have this. And it's getting pretty shabby looking. <laughs> I noticed in the zoning code that I was reading today when I was researching this that there, we don't have any code for patios, just, just decks. There's nothing for concrete. Yeah, it is kind of weird. That I can find. Yeah. I agree. But the concrete pour, is that going to be uh, how far off of the dirt surfaces do you expect that? It's ground level. So um, I don't know how to answer that. It's, it's, it's ground level. Okay. It's not it's, 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 it's ground level. To further explain the reason why we're doing this is that you're building a structure onto your structure, which makes it part of the structure. Correct. Now your structure no longer has a 10 foot setback. I understand. That's, that's no, 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 I get it. I understand. Yeah. Otherwise, the patio would be, and, and normally in a situation of somebody pouring concrete or stamping or whatever, I still make them no permit because it is a permanent structure. Yeah. It's going to be there. Right now. Like to have that document during my watch. Yep. It's funny because they're on the corner there. I I don't know. I know they have a shadow shore address, but I kept thinking they were facing beach side and the side yard setback is different than the backyard setback. So yeah, well, the corner lots have two setbacks. Right. So two front yard setbacks. Yeah. Well, the que the question I have is is the illustration just for illustration purposes in that you're putting a shed roof over your patio because in the illustration it does not go back to the end of the house no i'm not going to the end of the house i'm stopping it short it's 14 it's four it's 28 it's 28 feet long and the house is 52 feet long okay so this is what that's my knees going into court is on shots wednesday yeah. Is this all all concrete? This bearings here. It's all no, no. This are, so this is okay. So Shadow Shores over here. This is the front. This is beach side. This is my house. This is right here is a fence. So this is a gravel coming. This is all gravel now. What's going to be concrete is right here. The same exact area, only back here. Okay. It's going to be concrete. So this is a no. This is beach side. The, okay, yeah. this is this is where you're going. Yep, yeah. I'm going. Yeah. So when you're looking at beach side, which is kind of like looks like the front of my house, it's to the right or to the left. And it's going behind that fence that you have. Yeah, there. it's, so it's not going to be fence. visible from Correct. the street. It's not going to change anything. It's going to look all the same. From the so it's going to look like this. Yeah, exactly right. See, this just doesn't show my fence. See, right now, this is a fence, and there's a fence across. Okay. okay. Yeah, so not, you, not won't, you won't really see it anyway. It's going to be hidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might see the roof. Correct. Right. Correct. All right. Okay. How close is that roof going to be to the neighboring house? It's going to be three feet. <coughs> but there but not, no, not to the house. Not it's never, it's never going to be, the house. It's never going to touch. It's never going to be in their house. It's only their backyard. It's only going to be three feet away from their backyard line, but it never comes out to where their house is. And their house is how many feet from the property line? Are they at a 10 foot? No. 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 Their gas meter is on my property. It's really weird. Yeah, literally, the gas meter attached to their house is on my property. It's one of those old his, wall his, lots. His house yeah, it's, it's really tight. Yeah. So okay. that corner of his house is actually and probably at one time property. they had owned so property next to it. Yeah, yeah the same yeah. guy, Martinez, owned so that, that and the yeah. old car like mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. Hold it all up. Here's Lance's house. Oh, so, mm -hmm. that guy. This is where they're going to put their caddy over here. Mm -hmm. but okay. Instead of his house coming straight down, Kyle's house. <coughs> yeah, I'm just going to make it look a little bit better. So well, I mean, it's there. not cheap. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's that, but I'm doing it to look better. And that came up in the 
Yeah, and move water. That, that's the big thing. Move the, move the water. And I like the concrete. I had Even when you stopped <laughs> over. So, yeah, yeah, so Jim stopped over. When you walk out my house to that area, it's all gravel. And even when he stopped over, he'd come in and bring gravel in the house, you know, and it's 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 it's, 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 it's a mess. My grandson was with me this weekend and he picked up all the rocks by the door and he carried them to the table and he called them his, his little friend. <laughs> and he lined them off and he named them. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Well, this is what we call an area variance because it involves a setback uh, and a distance rather than a use of the property. The use doesn't change. And in the case of area variances, uh, the Ohio Supreme Court has laid out six factors that you are to consider. No one is determinative. Seven, I'm sorry, factors. And they are, will the property yield a reasonable return or can there be a beneficial use without a variance? Two, is, is the request substantial? Three, will the existing character of the neighborhood be substantially altered or will adjoining properties suffer a substantial detriment by granting this variance? Four, will it, the variance adversely affect the delivery of government services? Five, did the property owner purchase the property with knowledge of the existing zoning requirements? Six, can the problem be solved by some means other than a variance? And seven, will the granting of the variance preserve the spirit and intent of the zoning requirements with substantial justice to be served by granting the variance? So those are the factors you're supposed to weigh in your decision. And uh, at this point, if there's no further discussion, I'd ask for a roll call vote and vote either <coughs> yes or no. Yes, meaning to grant the variance. Gary? Okay. But Yes. Barb? No. Alan? Yes. Tamika? Yes. Leslie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Okay, the variance is granted, and the zoning inspector will send you a letter to that effect, and you can proceed. Thank you. And the meeting is adjourned. The hearing is adjourned. The hearing is adjourned. Not the meeting. <laughs> Jim, there was one more thing on zoning, uh, one of the things that Gary outlines that's supposed to be followed up on. Uh, it had something to do, there were trees on Garmin mentioned last month that I believe they said that if they fall over, they hit power lines and you were going to look at them, see if they were in the right way or the village. I, I didn't look at them. Uh, I've been, well, actually, since after the meeting last month, I've been in the hospital with this and I had the flu. Okay, so we can. When you get changed, but, when you're feeling better, or send yeah. Matt down there sometime. So I'm going to be with them, and we're going to look at all those things. There's nothing that's an emergency right now. Okay. <clears throat> didn't uh, didn't they take down a bunch? Last year. They're always they're addicted to doing it. They yes, they <laughs> always <laughs> take them down lots of trees. That's why. How can there be more left when they keep taking them down? The group. <laughs> they always find more. <laughs> So I know pretty well that when they go look, they'll find some. Trust me. I trust them. I don't trust them, but they will. Okay, anything else for zoning? That's all I have. Okay, well, um, I know you'd like to leave early and you got some issues tomorrow. So yeah, thanks for coming. Is, is there any other questions at all for Jim? Because he is going to leave. He's got medical <coughs> issues tomorrow. Oh, one thing we didn't talk about, I noticed the. Uh, Travel trailer at the end of Dragon Creek is going. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the last house? Because I drove by the other day. It's still there. 360 Dragon Creek. Yeah, it's the last house. Uh, right on. Right by the way. Right on right the ship or it was about a week ago. It was there. Okay. Well, neighborhood improvement. <laughs>
Did you guys have anything to do with that, or did it just go? No, it's he's been trying to get it to be able to sell it to get it out of there. Uh, he didn't tell me that he was taking it out, just <clears throat> just did. Okay, anything else for zoning? Leslie, do you have anything? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay, well then we will go to community relations. Tam. All right, so I have a few things tonight. First thing I have is a handout we're going to put on the table over here. It is from the Department of Commerce. Online, if you want to complain about your cable. Um, down service or down lines or service interruptions, anything of that sort, if you're unhappy with your cable company, there is a hotline that you can call. We're going to put the handout over on the table. That way you can call and complain about Spectrum if you want to. And the Dine Fiber. And then Bales? Well, the Dine Fiber is not a cable company. Well, um, they're an internet cable. provider, but not, not actual. <coughs> this is all of the cable TV. Hmm. Uh, the next thing I have is another handout that is going to be put over on the table is from the Medina County District Library. Uh, it is their plan for 23 to 25, their strategic plan. There is a wide variety of programs and different things that they do that they provide for community at the library. There's an agenda, a list, dates and times. I do believe the bookmobile still is Coming to Chippewa? Yeah, Thursdays? but I don't think it goes to stop going anymore. I think it goes over like the main drive or someplace like that. Okay. The next thing I have, which I'm going to ask Katrina probably to put on our Facebook, or not our Facebook, probably Facebook and our actual page, uh, is from Habitat Humanity. There is a program that they are doing for seniors. It's called Aging in Place. And it's for senior adults who may need some help for minor home improvements to help their well-being, to help them stay in their home longer and not have the burden of the cost or maybe physically they can't do it. It is a uh, grants that have been paid out. They started this in 2023. They're continuing in 2024 with it. They actually um, have a phone number. If anybody's interested, reach out to me. I can give it to you. If you know somebody in the neighborhood who is in need. Um, I know we had a resident last year who had something with zoning and it was a minor repair but they weren't able to do it themselves this is something that would help someone like that okay any questions on any of that they're working with the what is it the Medina seniors mm -hmm. or the office for seniors or something like that is working with habitat for humanity on this have you thought about putting it on the website that's what i i'm going to contact katrina or Lisa, whoever, sometimes one or the other helps out the website. Maybe so clear that one. Okay. Good. Um, next thing I have, Easter party is going to be on the 25th, 23rd, sorry, Saturday, the 23rd. It's going to be our Easter egg hunt. I'm working on getting an Easter bunny. I have three volunteers so far. I'm just going to try to see which one of them is going to pull through and actually be here. Uh, Are you having auditions? Uh, auditions? No, I'm not taking uh, auditions. <laughs> At this point, we'll take anybody we can get who wants to do it. They, uh, we're going to start at noon. In the past, we started at 2, but we're going to start the Easter egg hunt at noon this year. So that's a little bit different. And we'll have the crafts and the kids' projects and the same things we've had in the past. The last thing that I've got would be probably, is that old business or do to talk about now? Go ahead and talk about whatever it is. Okay. Did you have a question? The Easter party is going to be up here or Point Park? That's going to be here. Because with the inclement weather, we never know. We'd love to have it at Point Park. It would be a lot better as far as space and the egg hunt. I think it would be a lot funner. But we've had egg hunts where it's been snowing and raining. So to be able to do stuff with the kids inside the building and the egg hunt itself lasts all of like 120 seconds. <laughs> they, they, they like, they race out there, they gobble up all those eggs and bring them inside and start ripping them open. So yeah, up here is a much better 
venue for it. We just because we don't know what the weather is going to do. Do you have anything in my age group? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Can you bend over to okay. check out for these? <laughs> or did you want to have kids again? Child, somebody <laughs> <laughs> You know, if worse comes to worse, we always get everything back. That's true. I do. I had people jumping to do it though. I had three people tell me they would do it. So we'll see who's actually going to do it. The building will be rearranged for voting. Do you want me to leave it? Leave it rearranged because I'm going to unarrange it and rearrange it again, anyways. So, yeah. I, I change tables around kind of like I do for Christmas, okay. and I make little workstations. I do a <coughs> egg crafting station, and I do a cookie or a cupcake or something, and then we do other crafts. So, yeah, don't have to worry about putting it back in order because I'm going to completely disassemble it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we got a uh, next subject. We got a email from the park district. They didn't like what we wrote up for a proposal. They want us to make sure that we are going to be handling the fact that people making sure, uh, or we are making sure that people actually are a resident here, they live here, and they're allowed to, you know, have their vote on the lake, which is something that we do anyway when we give our stickers for the ramp. So, Ellen has emailed them back today, and I don't know if you didn't hear a response from them that quickly. No, but um, I'm going to revise the agreement tomorrow to include those things on our part and uh, send it to them tomorrow. And Nate, yeah. Nate said that, that we said we'd do that, and that's correct. That was an error on our part to not put that in there. Um, the, yeah, we check because we check everything now. Amber right. does this, but we check when you're getting a Beach pass, you check your residency, you're getting a key to the ramp, they check the boats and everything. So we would do the same thing with these stickers. And we did tell them that we would do that. We just forgot to put that in the group. We didn't put it in black and white. They want it in black and white. Also, are we going to provide them with a list of who's on what dock? No. I don't think that's necessary. They're taking care I of think the they do that anyways. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They have they have all the dock work goes with them. They, Good. What is there any Money flow to the village for handling this. It sounded like all of it. All of it. We get all, of it. all of the fees for stickers. And maybe I misread what Nate was saying. He said he saw no benefit. Well, because basically we said yeah. we sell stickers, and what he was saying was he expected us to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of like we would sell the stickers and we retain all the funds that we collect. That's so correct. basically, what they were saying was. Kind of like we've been saying, we're not really doing that much <coughs> money, but we did agree to to go through the procedures of checking residents and all that sort of thing because we do that now. Amber does that already, so this is just an additional sticker. Is she on board for this? Yes. Oh, yeah. She's all set. Yeah, she was. She spearheaded the idea. I think two years ago, she really did a lot of work on it, put it together. So they send us a list. They would send us the list of. <coughs> everybody that they have that gets a sticker and how much it costs because there's different amounts people pay. So we told them that we are not setting those amounts. They don't have to. And so they will send us a list with everybody's price. And then we just sell the sticker for whatever the price is that the park district has on it. I mean, different people pay different money. So we're not getting into that. They're going to tell us. And if a new person comes along with a boat, then yeah, we had agreed uh, when Tamas and I met with them that that they would set the price on it and just tell us, yeah, so and so gets a sticker and this is how much it takes. <clears throat> we don't make any of those decisions, and they were okay with all that too. In fact, I think the information they sent us the second day had those prices on them, didn't it? Everybody's prices, yes. Every sticker that had been sold over the years, what year it had been sold, and what the cost was. Mm -hmm. And with that, we, we would, I guess we didn't say it in the agreement, we should have, we would be checking the <coughs> residency, residency what they got. registration, and ownership. Yeah, we would check all that because we do that already. Yeah. <coughs> and they want a rat sticker. So hopefully they'll be okay with that. I think so. I'll send it tomorrow. 
Oh, you sent them that one part today, right? But you just I sent them an email today saying, saying, yeah, we are going to do that. And then <coughs> when I put in the agreement, tomorrow it will be in the agreement. So hopefully it was just a misunderstanding. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Okay. And then we will go on to building a utilities farm. Okay, I did I did reset the clock <laughs> on Saturday, so I'll put new batteries in there. <laughs> Our meeting is about to get started here right now. So maybe you better up your battery button. I'll, I'll, I've got batteries. I'll, I'll get an energizer, yeah. the pink button. It's probably in there for at least two years. So, um, but I did check all the uh, emergency exit lights. They're all working great too. So, <laughs> so do that every year, every time I change the clocks. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So uh, Gary had given me this uh, back road prevention. So I've already contacted Dine America. They're going to come in on Friday, this coming Friday, to perform that back flow test. Everything is filed electronically now. They don't fill it out and give me a copy. They fill it out and send it electronically to the sanitary engineers. Yeah, the problem is the instructions in that document <coughs> state otherwise. So that's why I asked for it to be sent back to me. Okay. If they want to email it or send it to me electronically, that's fine. Okay. Uh, just get it over to me. Okay. All right. I'll include your email address on there in case that's what they want to do. Uh, no, that's what we have to tell them to do. Okay. It's not optional. Okay. I will include your email address then. Yeah. Um, voting. Um, they're going to come in on Monday about 11.30 to set the booths up. I'll be in here Tuesday to open the building for the poll workers. And I've already got an appointment for them to pick up the voting machines on Wednesday. So that's already all in line. And um, I don't know if you want to do this at new business, but that the leftover, the remaining endowment money, is there any agreement to use that money for a memorial park um, on that property overlooking Craggy Creek? Uh, pur purchasing uh, marble monuments that um, could be engraved with uh, village residents who served in some branch of the military. You see a lot of these, Montville Township has one at the corner of 57 and Poe Road, um, right down on 252 and 18, uh, whatever community, that park, they have something similar to that. Uh, instead of like a dog park or something like that, maybe get some marble monuments that we could have, you know, residents who served in different branches of the military and have that. Maybe you better figure out how many residents there are before you start. <laughs> and what's your budget is? <laughs> well, I, I looked into the price of the monuments, which, and I was really surprised at, that they're not that expensive. Um, I did look into that, you know, depending on how big you want to get, but there could be quite a few of them, though, you know, uh, the different branches of the military. And again, how many our residents do we have? I mean, but through the years, I mean, if there's a family member somewhere along the line that, oh, my dad lived in the village and he was in the Navy and they could get it engraved in the side of the Yeah, but there's been a lot of wars since. And what happens Thank if we forget somebody? And oh, no, it would not be something that, I mean, the resident would come to us and say, my father or my mother served, and I'd like to get that. Engraved. Would you make them pay, like, the pride does for, for, the, for the cost of the engraving, possibly? Just for the engraving itself, not, not for the monument itself. But, I mean, just a suggestion or idea of something to use uh, that park for as a memorial. You know, Mark Ruder and I had the one about the village. Yeah, we, we already have plans for that. I don't know if you, you know, we already have, we, we put money aside for, about more than, for plaques and yeah. all kinds of things. And it was, it was, it's very, and it can be, it could be better, but, but the, 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 um, the thought process was people that were influential um, within the community, you know, going back however long right. to presence, and they could be still, they could still be alive. Like his father being the police chief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keith Riedel service. Both his parents, both parents. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, so I, I understand so that. I remember having that conversation. It's about just, that. it just has to really, and. And there's some older, there's some older. Uh, I, I remember seeing, I remember yeah, discussing just, that and seeing that. Well, right? we put the brakes on because it was cold. Uh, but, you know, even in the fall, we ripped some trees down. 
And uh, so it is moving forward, but it's uh, but we're open to what it's going to be for. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, we get we get if somebody, but I don't think it's just specifically. I don't think it would be a good idea to just make it specifically for veterans. No, no, you know, no, no, I, no. I love our veterans, just, but you know, we can open it up to. I was just the thought that with that leftover endowment money to do something like that to honor the yeah military veterans in the village. No, I can spend it there. So just yeah. the thought that I had. I got all kinds of ideas. Well, I heard one of the people wanted us to look into getting the shuffleboard court fixed, like the tennis court. Yeah, I got yeah. And so there's another thing you could use that money for. That's not a bad idea. I did some research on that today. I took some pictures. John Sandor. But I'll wait until is John mind. Sandor looking at? He said he was going to. Yep. Yeah, I spoke with him. Yeah, he's going to call you and look into like the surface we have on the tennis court. Yeah, yeah, I didn't talk to him about that yet, but uh, I, got no I didn't know if they had something like that. But yeah, I think uh, one of our residents sorry, down in Florida is down in Florida and called and thinks that's something we should do. Shuffleboard court's been there forever. It was used when it first went in. It's been mostly ignored, as far as I know. Most people don't even know it's there. Oh, this resident wanted us to get the basketball court surface on it. I'm sorry, the tennis court surface on that and build a second shuffleboard court on the point. And then, of course, there's people that want a second bocce ball court on the point. So you got a lot of people with a lot of ideas. Yeah, we, we do. But we put money aside for the bocce ball. I think that's a better idea for now. And John didn't realize when he he was talking about a shuffleboard over at Point Park as well. But from what I understand, that bocce ball is hugely uh, popular. I mean, you can't even, people have art, they can't even get through a game because there's so many people there wanting to play it. I don't play it myself, but at least that's what I was told. I know it's a crowd there on Friday night. Yeah, I would yeah. say there's a so packed house that. any other time. So, so you think we could definitely use, definitely could, yeah. yeah. Almost on Friday night, you spend three, four hours and do the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I don't even know how to play. <laughs> It's very, okay, good. It's very complicated. Yeah. So it sounds like you should have some kind of parks meeting and, yeah, and, we should. and let people go through these different ideas. Barb's idea, Barb could come even though she's, not, she's allowed, even though she's not parks That's meeting, right. she's allowed. Yep. And uh, go through some of this and see what the best option is. Well, we put money aside for the bocce ball um, court already, and I think that's, but, but I'm not, I don't know, except that it's still by the first turn here. I, I get talked about that when it's my turn. I, no, I just, it was just a thought I had. So. Yeah, okay. That's all I have. Okay, parks. Well, okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so we can talk about that. So yeah, we put money aside, uh, we budgeted for a second bocce ball court down there. Um, the whole idea is to have them next to each other. So they're everybody's together playing the same game. Um, but to bounce back to the uh, shuffleboard, you know, I was down there, I was looking at it today, did a little research on it. I did not, I called John, but he, he didn't answer. Uh, but I guess there's a paint, it's pretty expensive, a couple hundred bucks a a, a gallon, but uh, it's a special paint that you put down that makes it slide really nice. Uh, so what we're going to do, or this is just what I was thinking after speaking with them, um, power wash it, bring it down, and clean it because the concrete's good. There's a few cracks in it, but it's 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 pretty it's pretty strong still. Uh, put that surface paint down, and then um, buy these uh, these stencils, or I think that's what you call it. Yeah, those are expensive. Those are like between two and four hundred dollars. If anyone knows somebody that but has one of purchase, purchasing, it, yeah, purchasing a stencil. Yeah, I guess you need the stencil when you spray paint or you paint it. Yeah, but could you rent them instead of purchasing? I don't know. I just kind of started thinking about this today. I didn't. I did some research. Spent about twenty, but half. Yeah, you need parks meeting. Yeah, <laughs> come on. I'm not kidding. Yeah. yeah. We clean that. Tape. I don't think we. I don't think that's necessary. I mean, you can get the dimensions online and paint it on there. Yeah, but you want to make it look nice. And if it costs you a couple hundred bucks and it's done nice, it's money well spent than just going out there. Our for, our former people that would do stuff like that would do it the way Barb said. 
Right. Yeah. Okay, well, that's why we'll spend the money on They figure out a way to do it to make it look nice. I'm sure it's going to be nice, essential though. on Etsy that you can download and, and probably take up to the library's print shop and print. Yeah, there's got to be cheap, cheap ways of that. I saw that out with Shines. Yeah. And uh, there's definitely other possibilities of spending that. And it's just kind of in its infancy. But um, so I think that would be nice. That would be nice to take it from there. I don't know the length of the shuffleboard, but um, I was thinking that we could mark the end of it for cornhole boards. Um, so it could have a dual purpose. And then the cornhole yeah. boards would be sitting on the ground. Um, it's just an idea that I had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mean put maybe. the cornhole boards on top of right. your extension? Right. Like set them down and then stay there permanently. Is that what you mean? Yeah, unless, unless they would affect the paint job of the nice. Maybe it's possible. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to be difficult. But you really, you can just put cornhole boards out on the grass. It would be right. the same thing. But uh, right next to it, actually, you could do that. But um, yeah. But the ones yeah. that are down at Point Park right now, they look pretty ratty. You know, because they sit in the grass all the time. Um, With the permanent ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we could budget for that. Something I have some uh, cornhole boards, actually. I donated them to the village. I think they're in shed, but they're really nice. They can okay. be painted. I was also going to suggest that we may put in the budget, because I'm guessing it's our responsibility, to update the uh, totem pole. It could probably use some touch-up paint. Because that, yeah, and that, that's a good idea, though. Total pole is bolted onto its staff. Mm -hmm. It can be removed and painted. The cornhole platforms mm -hmm. are also bicycle uh, ramps. Uh, I can see that. That'd be fun. Not designed for that purpose, mind you, but that's what they're used for. Yeah. Oh, I guess so, I can't imagine who's doing that. Maybe the kids like do it in the middle. So of the we intentionally make them of steel and reinforce them. Uh huh. They just need. Cleaned up and painted. Oh, got it. And they're not going to get pretty because <laughs> that's a flood area. Right. That's and cool. the utilization, aside from cornhole, are biceps. Oh. Yeah. You know the problem with that, and, and I don't think I don't think it's doesn't have to be perfect, but the fact they that they're metal, metal. Of course they do. They, they don't really bounce, you know. If you're playing, no, playing cornhole, they, 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 they don't bounce the way they're supposed to bounce. But but we don't need angels dancing okay. on heads. I understand that. But <laughs> just uh, intersect that. But, you know, well, that's true. Anyway, but when I mentioned that totem pole thing, Suzanne at the village had her wood sign painted last year, and it looks amazing. I yeah. Maybe we could contact the person that did that. And Does that fall into the project committee? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, they bought it. Put it. Yep. I, have, I didn't even I didn't even look at it since it's been. So it's got a okay. big space. It's really nice. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a symbol of the community. I know many no, of us take a lot idea. of photos of it. Mm -hmm. Pam and Bob get back yeah. and say, hey, we need to pay it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cornhole is 27 feet and shovelboard is 52. Oh. oh, there's plenty of room. Oh, so yeah, there's plenty of room. It wouldn't mark <clears throat> the board at all. I got a size any wire has purchased the shovelboard set for the cornhole. Yeah. 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 Yeah
six, seven years. Yeah, that's what it's I mean. Not, it's not they're not dying to get to it. That you got to go out and get elaborate with it. But if you make it nice and people join in, then maybe somebody want a second one or whatever. Then yeah. you think about it. I would say. Yeah. Wait to see. If there's some interest. It's yeah. like the tennis court was kind of just sitting there. We put the pickleball in now. Yeah. Now they're going to have fights up there. Tell me. <laughs> it's a turf war. Right. Schedule. Um, so we hired a uh, new beach manager, Ann Check. She's a local person, local resident. She's been here about a year, I think, maybe longer. Not 100% sure there. Um, and currently, the beach manager works about five months. Uh, the, the salary um, last year, we went to salary, and that was $1,000. It was 250, $250 for four months. It's closer to five months, give or take, give or take a couple weeks. At the beginning, a couple of weeks at the end, um, I wanted to see about raising that to a uh, thousand two hundred fifty, uh, 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 raising it by two hundred fifty dollars, just because that way it would be two hundred fifty dollars a month for five months. So that's uh, just prior to that, it was a lot less. Well, was not that hourly or something? Well, prior to for last year, last, last year? before last year, it was it was hourly. It was so confusing. We don't because um, right. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous because you had to you had to look at your your watch when you're talking to somebody on the phone. Or you're texting. Didn't, or you're it didn't I make sense. That but I mean, oh, the work that's done by the uh, in that position is definitely worth that amount. Of money. Some of those beach supervisors over the years have been known to work a shift. If you have if this girl decides to work a shift as beach tenant, she get paid separately for that, right? Um, we have really worked at it. I, the thought process was, you know, with that additional two hundred fifty dollars a month, that um, I would ask that one shift be covered, unless it doesn't need to be covered. You know, if if the if the, the girls or the, the kids are you know cry, cry for hours, well then they should it should go to that. You know, but no, but called, as time goes on, the beach attendants around after the <laughs> I think that's of not July, a bad they idea. get a little flaky, right. and, and you do have empty shifts. And in the past, we haven't done it in. A, recent past, but in the past we've had the supervisor's job is when no one shows up that they work the shift. She'd we haven't awesome. been doing that. So my question yeah, is if full time it, and she does she's full time. And right. if this happens, if that were to happen, I just want to clarify that. If, the, if it does um, happen you get one working right now. I, hours, did, I, I like get, that idea. That pay in, in addition to their other duties. Now I know they have a lot of duties and people say well they're not watching the beach. What are they doing? They're making sure those kids are there scheduling. Uh, it's like herding cats sometimes with the teenagers, um, especially, like I said, as time goes on in the summer, then they get more interested in doing something else. And so when you call them, and Kelsey was always very good at this, if you call her and you say, nobody's at the beach, who's supposed to be there? She always knew who was supposed to be there. And most of the time she knew why they weren't there, and she'd get somebody down there immediately, which is kind of what she wanted them to do. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that idea, and I thought about that. Um, if there's a situation where all of a sudden somebody has to cover two or three shifts a week, you know, they should get paid a little extra. Compensated for, if they're covering other shifts, they should be compensated at that level. Yeah. She works full time, so she won't be available during. No. Yes, well, <coughs> there's evening hours, hours down there. Evening too. hours and weekends. Yeah. I'm just saying, not just her, anybody that has that job. In general. I like that. I like that idea. You uh, make it a salary position, a reasonable If salary they work position. beach attendant hours, if they're just doing their supervisor job, then they get the salary. If they work the beach ten hours, they should get that pay that. Okay. They yeah, I like that. that. Um, but what are your thoughts on bumping it up to uh, $1,250 for the season? I make the motion that we move the beach manager's position to $1,250. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And speaking of the beach, the applications for the beach attendance uh, can be found on the Village website. Um, not on Facebook yet, but on the Village website. There was a post on Facebook. It was very vague. It was that was taken. That was a mistake. It's still out there. Really did the, on the Facebook it is? Yeah, it's I just looked it up. Yeah. I was going to share, Kelsey made these ads last year that had like a photo of the beach attendance and I can, I'll see if she can update it for me. I, so I, you know, I don't think it would, it would hurt to have it on Facebook. Um, Just to the, make it a little more fun. It was very big. People were asking yeah, that's, questions. So. That's great. I, 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 uh, I 
appreciate the help with that. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not good at that. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, so yeah, I, I mean whatever. That was perfect. It was just I think they just posted the that the applications were on our website. So mm -hmm. I'll I'll liven it up and, and it okay. say beach attended. It says it's a park attendant. People were like, is this the same as beach used. attendant? Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, that's the uh, that's the new name. Leslie did a lot of work for the Lions Club. You're very good at those kinds of things, putting those things on Facebook. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, we want it to look fun. Yeah. Because <laughs> it is, right? <laughs> so fun. <laughs> it's fun. <clears throat> um, ski team. I spoke with Tim Cochran. Um, we're still hammering out the details. We had a long conversation with them. Just a few things that we got to work out before before the yeah, or the uh, agreement gets presented to us. So that's-, that's Did important. you get in anywhere with that part that you want changed? Uh, we're working on that, I think so. There's a few There's a few things to consider, but yeah. And okay, Bungalow Bay Park, another, I mean, this is where I was talking about, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the shuffleboard um, rehab surface which we already talked about um yeah we're going to pressure spray and wash all the the wooden swings i mean the wooden swing and all the wooden um benches out there they're looking kind of ratty so that's going to get done this year um and yeah the porta potty on, on uh, point park getting a lot of, been getting a lot of pushback from that i don't know some people aren't liking it maybe we should consider it just for events. I don't know what some everyone's thoughts on that. Picture it pushed over. What's that? Picture it pushed over. And it will. <laughs> yeah. You know, just it's an unsightly thing. Most of the people attending porch rocker are local or friends of local. And there's trees around. So that's just a Maybe you got a yeah, I mean it's a good thought. I, I like the idea, but then you can see a lot of problems with the cost involved, and everybody has golf carts. People driving by, by so thinking it's, it's roadside <laughs> drug deals, <laughs> all those <other stuff. laughs> But uh, ideally, it would be great. But there's a lot of negatives that come, and I, I heard from a lot of people that didn't like the idea. And I got calls, you know. Um, yeah, that's it. I think that's all I have there. It's amazing what motivates people. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I'm not sure if this would fall under parks, but um, I call it like the Briarwood Island, where the old the, there's a little tiny pavilion in the middle uh, on Briarwood. Briarwood Boulevard. You know where the little the little looks like a little wishing well or something where Bob Williams gets water for the Pride Committee. Yep. Where the place is split. Anyway, I'm just wondering if. We can kind of put it in someone's ear that we can make that look a little bit nicer. It's kind of the, if people coming in that way, it's the first thing they see. It had a roof put on it last year, right? And I, I guess that. I'm talking yeah. about like maybe flowers or the you know pride committee or the garden club, maybe just coordinate. I don't know. I'm just put um, that out there. The, they did a lot of tear out. There was a lot of overgrowth over the years, mm -hmm. so most of their enhancement were taking it out. Mm -hmm. So I. Yeah, I was going to say to you, Leslie, uh, we spent hours and hours and hours trying to maintain flowers and such. Uh, it's not maintained. It ends up full of weeds. So we finally gave it up and pulled all that crap out of there. It's almost impossible to maintain without routine maintenance. Mm -hmm. It's no different in your personal yard. You got a flower bed. Right. It's hard to keep up on. If you don't years take care of it. got planted, the groups, the garden clubs, and whatever would plant them, but they wouldn't maintain them, and then they were really bad. I feel like it's a, an underused um, space we have in the village. I just, I don't know, I always think, oh, we should do like a park, a, an event there, or a little art show, maybe a Bob Moats art show in the future, or something. It's just such a, it's a lot of space. It's a nice little area there. I'm trying to remember um, when you come off of uh, uh, Lake Road, 
tree come there has splits and there are some shrubs. Mm -hmm. And I thought pride had planted. <clears throat> we, we ended up pulling a lot of uh, uh, growth out, including small shrubs and such. So if anything gets planted there, it's my responsibility, is that what you're saying? All right, that sounds good. Yeah, if, you just an idea. If, no, it's, it's not Saturday. a bad idea. Just understand that whatever you create, right. you have to maintain. Yeah. And that, that's where you're going to find your challenge. Right. Ideas are very plentiful. Right. Oh, that'll look wonderful. See, who's taking care of that? And then you get into this. Right. You guys, Sam and Bob are on, and they, Sam says everything we've ever planted there, the deer have eaten. Oh, God. Because they used to plant it a lot. <coughs> Didn't Glass Snap, he has those fruit trees He's that been. planted there, right? Yeah. I have no idea. I really never paid attention. He, he won those fruit trees somewhere, and they planted them uh, down the entrance to the Barber Park. Huh. And it, and the other the other problem that's very viable is the deer population is in, increasing. Right. I had to cover my arms and my cottage. Right. Because six foot off the ground, they ate them. So, it's an issue. Do a good jerky recipe. Do you have one now? I do. I'm several. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else for parks? No, that's it. Okay, before the streets, bud. Okay, I, I don't have much. Uh, everybody's aware that Columbia Gas is in the neighborhood working on essentially Bass Bay and Brookshore. And Long Anchor. And Long Anchor and Lazy Wood <laughs> and Rock Ridge. Uh, but they're doing a very good job. They're finding that things aren't exactly where they were led to believe they were, um, but they're doing good work and they do a good job of cleaning up after themselves. When they're done with the project, they'll come back in the spring and reseed everything. So I'm not aware of any complaints. Anybody else? I notice they're paving. Uh... When they cut the street service, they paid that. Yeah, they cut it and then fix it. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, the next project I have to bring to your attention is repaving uh, Parkway Path. I have an estimate from most paving in the amount of $14,832. And I'd like to make, make a motion that we spend the money and repave that road. It's in dire need, it's dried out, it's crumbling. We've had a lot of residents, well, not a lot, I mean, it's not a big road, but there's been a lot of complaints over the last couple of years about that road. So Gary and I talked about it. If we do this, if you approve my doing it, we'll, we'll bump my, my money by $10,000 and the Forty-eight, thirty-two will come out of all the remaining monies. How are they going to resurface that? Grind it. No, and grind and fill. Grind and, 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 and pave surface pavement. Yeah. Luckily for us, we don't have any major structural flaws. It's just drying out, crumbling up. Try to move that we approve the. Uh, oh, I thought you already did that. Yeah. You're seconding his motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I do second your motion. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What is it to be my motion? <laughs> when you better bring it up. <laughs> you didn't bring it up. And that's all I have. Okay. Okay, law director. I have no cases in court, and that's a good sign. Good. We'll get no bill from you <clears> next month. Then. Well, I do other things. I can go to court, but at any rate, um, and I do have another lease agreement from the park district. This has nothing to do with dock stickers. It's a uh, leasing part of the lake for the uh, for the beach and the boat ramp area. And the last one we had was ten years ago. Uh, we they sent us one in December, but apparently they that wasn't the right one. 
was based on the last 10 year one and they've rewritten a new one, which I sent you today. Uh, the, the differences, I mean, it's a 10 year lease. We always ask if they would give us more and they haven't put it in this lease. But um, the new things or things that are, are getting more ink in it are, um, they want to review any new rules for the beach, use of the lakefront area, that area. They do agree to that we may enforce our ordinances there. The village is responsible for safe use, cooperation with law enforcement, uh, preventing public disturbances. They uh, have the right to close the lake for water quality issues, and that would include the beach, and that's, that's not new. Here. No, that's not new. And um, as far as the, the beach property and the little bit of the lake that you, you have, you'll use, you're responsible for maintenance. You can't erect improvements or alterations without the park district's consent. And you have to keep it insured, which you, you do have it insured. So uh, if we build a, 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 just a shelter for the park attendants, like we have that, do we have to get that approved by that? I would take that to mean more like, I know he kicked up a little bit when we put that kayak launch in, said we didn't tell him, but we had. Mm -hmm. But we didn't exactly what happened with that one, if you recall, we said we'd get that like on a Wednesday night and all of a sudden the people we were getting it from came down Friday morning before we even had time to think about it and put it in. Right. So, but he was sent all the information on that. He, he kind of sounded like he kind of would have liked to know about that first, but he was okay after he saw what we put in. I think he thought we were putting in something that was kind of rinky dink and looked like it. So this is generally just something on the lake, on the water? That's um, what I would think. Because it's our land. Yeah, permanent alterations or improvements upon a leased property, which is in the water. It is the water. So it'd be something like that kayak park. And it would have to be permanent, not a temporary structure like the, the raft. Really, all our stuff is temporary because we take it home. Right. We had one yeah. call from a, a fisher person wanting to know when they were going to put their dock in. <clears throat> Fishing dock. So, well, the boat ramp dock at the public. It's not. It's not where we used to work. Not our problem. Yeah. So this is a new and expanded lease from the last ten-year lease. <clears throat> um, I would suggest you look it over whoever wants to. If you didn't, don't get the email. Let me know. I sent it today. I got the email. What? What can you? Uh, <clears throat> Send me the prior. Sure. If I could compare one to the other. I just sent that to you last week. Remember the part that had the probate court in it? Wasn't that the prior one? That was the prior sure one. That's the same. And so we don't have to we approve it until the next meeting. I sent that to you last week. Remember? There was no, I don't no. recall reading that in this one. That probate court in this one? Like the old one? No. Because that was going to change the old one and it had to be approved by probate court. Um, yeah, the, the lease would have to be approved. And they said it was something new that they started doing now. Well, it's not in this one. Yeah. Well, I guess they quit doing it already. It did quit already. Oh, no, this agreement is contingent on approval by the Medina County Probate Court. Is that, is that statutorily a problem, uh, right? Yeah, I think the Probate Court monitors the park district. <clears throat> because of jurisdiction and power over the yeah, other it Back and forth. Uh, uh, Kevin says, I got nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe somebody well, better tell him. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, they right. put it in here, so I assume they're going to take care of that. I was just curious as to what direction to the court. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. I'll send it to everybody. Okay. Okay. You don't have to look at it if you're not interested. Okay. Well, we have an ordinance uh, in the works for this. It's had two readings, I and mean, we can wait till next meeting to have the third reading. Is that what you want to do? Wait till the next meeting and have third reading? Yes. Yeah, if we're going to review documents. I okay. Think right. Yeah, because you just got that today, right? Uh, no, I got it a while ago, but it kind of got lost in email. Well, we land. just got it today. You just got it. Uh, yeah. Wait, go ahead. And um, then 
You want to talk about the sale of the lots now? Yes. Okay. You wanted me to advertise for sale of the two lots on Garmin. <clears throat> the deed has gone through. So there's nine or 10 lots down on Chippewa that are unbuildable now by deed restriction. Those are included. They're right at the northeast corner of Garmin and Chippewa. And um, you wanted to advertise these for an auction sale. And I decided that we also better advertise in the newspaper, not just in our social media platforms. And um, by the time I got around to doing that, it was too late because I have to advertise it two weeks before the auction. Okay. So that's my my problem. But I will go ahead and do it unless you tell me otherwise for next month's meeting. <clears throat> and the ad's going to go in the newspaper. The ad's going to go. I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, and what kind of auction was going to be a live auction or a sealed bid auction? Well, I. Sealed bids doesn't seem very smart because then people can't compete with each other. Mm -hmm. So I like a live auction. I don't think we've ever had more than one bidder on any of these. <laughs> I had a lot of calls about it after the last right. meeting, people that had watched it, the, the right. meeting online. So people had questions. Um, I think Jim Brandenburg answered Sorry, my question. questions in case anyone's watching the meeting and wants to know the Q&A. Um, Someone asked me if you could park a vehicle on these parcels, um, park a camper, a trailer, a boat. Jim said that you cannot park uh, anything that has a license plate on um, just a vacant parcel, except right. in the winter we have no guidelines about parking a boat on a trailer. So he said that would be questionable, I guess. Right, we do have an ordinance about motor vehicles. Right. Um, someone asked me if you could put a fence up there. They asked me, um, can you, can we, if I buy that property, can I store firewood there, mulch piles, stones, you know, can I, you know, what can I store there if I buy it? So, so what a can lot I of store people, there? They tell, did Jim tell you the answer to that? Um, not that one there, no. What about the fence? He didn't tell you the answer. Well, I'll give you some answers. Okay. Um, the, the deed restrictions are you no know, buildings. Right. I, I didn't put in there, uh, anything but buildings. So if you want an ornamental fence, if you want a rock garden, if you want a water fountain, you know, you can put all up, you can put all that in there. You can landscape it. I mean, there's no restriction against that. Hmm. But as far as, but no structure can be built, such as a garage, a shed, or a house. As I understood Leslie's comment, it's not about, essentially, it's what can you place there? Right, Foot right. pile. Pile of stone, pile of bulbs. Of course, the people I think were wanting to know: Can I buy that and park my extra trailers there? Or no. and I think the answer is no. If right. they're vacant with not with no boats on them mm -hmm. for winter storage, you can't park them. But if you want to put a nice garden in there and a bench, that's fine. Or a fence. I don't know why you'd want a fence, vacant property. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no construction materials, correct? There's a, we have no, a you can't store that. construction materials there. You can't. I've got a question about the non global issue. If you have an adjacent lot, let's say you can't attach this parcel to those parcels, and then you have one giant parcel. Absolutely, you can do that. Okay. You can do a lot comp recombinate, a lot combination. Does that make it a buildable lot? That's what I was going to ask. If those two lots that were buildable and they adjoin these two parcels to them, are they now buildable? No, because the restriction on the against building runs with the land. But you did say when you did that, that a person could get that changed. Well, change. you could go to the village and ask the village to remove it. Yeah, the only and person you have that it is the person. Is that who would be the only one could remove it? That's the only you created it, and it's for the benefit okay. of the village, and only the village can remove it. <clears throat> and you asked about the cost. Yeah. The cost was $155, which includes my legal fees to write it and the recording fee at the recorder's office to record it. Got it. And as far as why does it, why did the village pay for it? Because the village wanted the restrictions. Right. I don't think anybody else can't get Mexico to pay for it. <laughs> well, I think their question was yeah. why was it important to have the restrictions on a lot? If you're not keeping it, who cares? I guess is the question. Good question. Green space. Mm -hmm. Green space. Yeah. We do want to. Why do we? Yeah. I mean, that and selling it is selling any of it is council's question. No. 
And yeah. then another question I got today um, about the same parcel from um, someone who had made some other questions um, was the parcels. Oh, why are we why are we listing them so low? Why aren't we listing them at fair market value? Well, that's enough. Since the ad hasn't gone in yet, I want to ask you that as counsel. I'm going to put in there what we do for share of sales, which is five, a 10 percent down at the time of auction, balance due in 30 days. That gives me time to write up a deed, and uh, if the buyer wants to do a title search, they can do it. The men say five hundred dollars. Right. So uh, my question is: Is that do you want that? Yeah. Well, the, the person that, that questioned, again, just has the best interest of the community, and, and they said, right. we have a responsibility to the village, not to neighbors that ask about buying the parcels. So that they asked why we were pricing it so low, and that was the impression they got. What was the price we put on? I think like... It's minimum bid $500. Per lot. Per, per lot. Per per lot. lot. When we sold the property across the street from there, didn't um, Amber Galactus buy those lots? She bought one. I don't know. If she yeah, that was them. in Don Garman. It was on. But it was adjacent to her property. Right. Right. It was. Right. Well, how did we go about that? Same way. It was, it was sold for, I think, 500 Men, right? Yeah. So, was, there was yeah. only one bidder, her. Yeah, it was. It's remarkably small. Not remarkably. Small. It's smaller than the parcel. When we sold other ones, Barb, like when we sold the house on the corner of Lake and Chippewa, we had a real estate agent involved in that one, and he did he did that auction probably at that house. I remember we were at the council meeting, and they were selling it across the street because that's where it was because we're at the bank then. And so when we have the real estate agent uh, involved, I believe we have the auction. Like I guess that was kind of a live auction. Yeah. Uh, when we don't have a real estate agent like this one, then I guess we just do it right here. At the right. Well, that's how we did it with the club property on Craggy Creek. Right. <clears throat> and initially, the first go around, we had it priced at fair market value and <laughs> right. not one bid. Right. Not one bid. And then when we lowered the opening bid, then we did get a couple people that were interested. But What's the auditor value on those? Uh, Since you I, know it's not buildable, it might have changed it. Right. Appraised land value eight hundred and thirty dollars. Thank you. What was it? Eight hundred and thirty dollars. It was six hundred and something before they raised it from the last reappraisal. Well, with respect to your earlier comment, I would I'd recommend we take a ten percent minimum thirty days to pay total. Yeah, I'd like to put that in there. That should be in there. Yeah. No one objects. I support that. Do you have to vote on that? No. I think it's a good OP bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to keep that. All right, I'll get it done for next month. <clears throat> Any other questions? No, comments? do you have anything else? No. Okay. And then anybody that, have questions for yeah, the auction would you do it at the beginning of the council meeting or in advance of the council meeting? I think, I think at the beginning would be fine. It won't take long. Do it whenever mm -hmm. we want, Alan, when you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Beginning, everybody going to be Well, sometimes time. you do it 15 minutes before that night. It's not going to take much time. But at the beginning, so those people aren't having to sit through the whole meeting. Correct. Right. Okay, Gary. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. On Saturday, I distributed the bank reconciliation report showing everything in balance. <coughs> Any questions or comments on the bank reconciliation? I have a motion to the council to sign off. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Good <coughs> on Saturday, I also delivered to council the appropriations report for February. Any questions, comments on the appropriations to the We have a motion on allowing council to sign off. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Uh, I did not receive any calls from council pertaining to the 2024 permanent appropriations. As a result of that, I did list 
Barb's request of last year to me to add six thousand four hundred dollars to the buildings. What so was I, that allocated for? Uh, she listed several things. One was another light pole, right, with a light. That point park. So I did that, add that to the appropriations, and then tonight, but I asked for another ten thousand on the streets. I need to ask you. <clears throat> Sorry? He said I need to ask for money too. So do I. <laughs> hey, I asked you guys a month ago. Well, I just learned about this. So. Are you, you at last month's meeting? I She's new. <laughs> That's right. She gets a rookie pass. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, do you guys have your numbers? I do. Um, I need to add 15000 to my budget in case we have to tear down the house at 9 Parkway Path. Okay, just a minute. So that's zoning plus 15,000. Yes. Is that 15,000 cover trees? No. <laughs> the 15,000 should cover the tariff. Okay. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember back to the buck yeah. property where that, because we spent like $10,000 on the tariff, that leveling that property. I don't remember it coming out of zone. I thought it was a special account. Or is it zoning a more appropriate place to put it? Um, well, the way, the, here for Fox, so. right. the way the budgets are set up now it will be out of zoning, like most of the other departments, are all out of the general fund anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's where it would come out of. But right. I just set up a new fund. You're comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Not a special fund. Right. Yep, I need a special fund. I, well, I, because it's a special event. Yeah. My, my only, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I'm just going to throw it out there. I, I think it's in, inappropriate of the village to encumber the cost to tear that residence down. Um, and I base it upon the historical relationship with the owner of the property, who has been absolutely positively reticent to do anything except go to court and pay fines well wouldn't we pay for it and then get reimbursed for i thought there would be a lien and we'd get that money back. <laughs> yeah and like you can get the money back but that, that's, that's, that's true guarantee. but he's the kind of individual my opinion just my opinion all alone he'll never sell it and we're on the hook for whatever money we invest to so then the how problem. does it get torn down if we decide it needs torn down? Well, if he doesn't sell it, doesn't that lien go on his property tax? Yeah, yeah. sure it yeah. does. But put a lien on his taxes. However, there's already a mortgage on it. <laughs> I'm going to find out the exact amount from the mortgage people now that they're talking. Yeah, the mortgage company involvement is a new twist on that one. Right. right. But is the so, mortgage company new? Did we know that? No, we've never no. It's an old mortgage, but um, it got their attention when I sent them a copy. So you're saying she can put that in, the, in her budget doesn't mean it has to get spent. Just right. because it's there. Right. Okay. But I'm just throwing that out there. Right. I'm not crazy about us paying to have that no. torn down either. I just, no, but but I you did, can put the money. I hadn't seen it. So I went over there and, and got a good look at it because I've seen everything. I thought this can't be a tear down. It's that. It's in Did you look inside. I didn't go inside, but just get I, you could smell it yeah. from the street. Mm -hmm. It smells no. like cat. Um it's 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 in pretty bad. The damp mildewy mildew. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's bad. I think yeah. you have to see what the, the mortgage company says. I wouldn't want to really tear it down until you had agreement on recovery. And they said they were going to take a look if at we, it. If well, we can recover the expense, they do. That's one thing. Right, right. You know, I've had a mortgage. Like, right. We, we are, should not have to pay for it, but somebody needs to, it, it needs torn down. That money has to come from somewhere initially. I understand that. So I understand that part of it, but okay. I'm not in favor of putting this on the hook. Well, I'll say right. if I can file a lien on it for the tear-down cost, but that doesn't mean it's going to get paid. If there is a... Uh, yeah, right. You know, if there's a thirty thousand dollar mortgage on it and it goes for sheriff sale for ten thousand dollars, we're I not. I thought the mortgage paid. was over a hundred. I don't know. It is. Yeah. Have you checked it? 
I look. I think I listed up. I did <clears throat> on the county recorder's page at one time. Yeah. Because it's recorded. The deed is. I mean, the mortgage is recorded on the recorders. But. I mean, the irony is, there are. There's probably at a minimum, a half a dozen people, that will pay a cash money. Right. Right now. Right. And well, I'm not ready. Well, well, I can't think about it. Sorry. I've referred every one of those people because they've called me to uh, to the owner and said, talk to him, you know, try. Right. And I've got a home address for him. I've got a telephone number for him. He's not in hiding. He just is, He's just like not you say, not responsive. he is fighting a passive battle. Yeah. By doing nothing. Right. Yeah. So you can set money aside, but the the reasonable chance that we'll ever be able to turn it down on our own and, and it's not on par with Lincoln Feltovers that was up on Rusty that Brook. Was, that would be on imagination. Yeah, and they rebuilt that house. Which one where? Rusty Next Felton. to where Pam Ron lives, you know she lives on oh, Rusty yeah, Brook. Yeah. Right. That white one. Yeah, okay. I, like I said, I didn't go inside. Yeah. The doors were boarded up and I'm, it's not my right. that was breathtaking. So she can put that money in her budget or however you want to do that, Gary, and then we can move on because she had another one that wanted money too. Yeah, do you have a budget? Yeah. No? I don't get money. Did you I think I, we figured that out in December. Oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Alice, you know where your money's are at, right, for this year? I do. Okay. I understand it finally. Are you okay on that? Mm -hmm. Was there any other change to the budget? Appropriations. Is that due at the end of this month? Yeah. <clears throat> Just trying to find everything up earlier. So the way that this works then uh, for permanent appropriations, that's what we're calling this. Again, I'm adding six thousand four hundred for Barb's department, land and buildings. I'm adding ten thousand for streets for Bud's request, and now I'm adding fifteen thousand for zoning. That makes the new total appropriations permanent, $935,559. And 399000 of that is passed through for the Phase 9 OPWC project. But I have to report it as ours as it passes through the village. Good. So nine hundred and thirty-five thousand five hundred and fifty-nine dollars are total appropriations for twenty twenty-four. Any questions, comments about that? Um, one point to Barbara's request: mm -hmm. uh, the no tech loan would be able to help offset some of that or expand it. Possibly, if, if nobody it's else. Was that, if nobody else, had, I mean, I had emailed Gary about mm -hmm. this. And I didn't. I never saw any other reply to Gary's emails, so I didn't know if anybody else had any plans. No, uh, the NOPEC is strictly for electrical. So when you were right. electric, that would savings. offset it. Yeah. So you can deal with that when it comes. I don't have a direct quote from an electrical contractor for a pole and or light yet, but it would go down near where those uh, bollards are with the. Uh, um, electric outlets on them right now. We go near that with a light that we would be able to turn on and off. Other questions, comments, or appropriations? Okay, it's nine hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred fifty-nine dollars. Alan, you want to read that? Sure. Ordinance. Please. First reading of ordinance number 895-24, an ordinance to set permanent appropriations for the current expenses of the village of Chippewa Lake, State of Ohio, during the year ending December 31st, 2024, and declaring the same to be an emergency for the public peace, health, safety, and welfare. Is there a motion to waive the three reading requirement? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Is there a motion to adopt ordin ordinance number 895.24 of the appropriations ordinance as an emergency? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Can I sign off on that right. document, please? Okay, that clears that up. That moves that through. <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
Okay. As Alan mentioned, we have a NOPEC grant for this year, $1,643. And uh, all I need is a project to pass along through NOPEC to make sure it gets approved. So those monies are available. Uh, as a reminder, we also have a PEP grant for $1,000 that I can apply for once a safety project is identified. So I'm waiting on both of those to uh, get approval. Uh, Does anybody have a safety project in mind? Because if not, we could use that money also for the light at Point Park. Uh, right. It's safety. I mean, the sheriff's department says that light makes it safer. What I would need is a copy of the uh, bid for the work. And once I have that, then I can submit it. I mean, I don't know if anybody else has. Well, the only thing I thought about was uh, parks. Oh, for the uh, CPR? CPR, correct. Yeah, that's right. Because we used that last year for that. That's a good thing to have, actually. CPR training yeah. for those beach tenants. You get a bunch of new ones. Whether it's new, new ones. Or... New ones? Because the any returning it's good for two years yeah it's good for two so they the what they bring fresher last year don't have to get this year no. right it's good yeah but well, i think it's a good idea that they do we it, could it's not just something they practice it. that's true <clears throat> so whenever you identify it or lock in on a project can we like split it, it? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, well, it's probably good. Sure. Yeah, because there won't be there won't be that many, especially we have to return people. <clears throat> you should have a lot of returning, hopefully. Well, I guess uh, some hard art numbers here. Uh, your appropriations are for nine hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and your cash adjusted balance is a six thirty three. Right. Like I mentioned, nearly 400,000 of that is passed through, so that does not impact our <clears throat> actual cash. But you got to just pass through monies from the grant agency, so that brings it down to about 635. That would use up all your available cash, plus uh, whatever revenue you need to Right. With, uh, right. We have this you know, the revenue coming in this year. So every time you increase your appropriations, of course, uh, that draws down for monies available the next year, typically. So all these uh, changes to the appropriations are possible. It's just that you have to realize that it does potentially impact spending for the next year's budget. <clears throat> but based on the current budget, based on our current uh, financial position, this budget does not negatively impact the, uh, the village. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Ken, you had mentioned uh, a list. Do you have a list of projects and the costs for each one that you've identified for this year? I did. I emailed that to you. You don't have that? Um, I'll send it back to you. I don't have it printed right up here. Okay. Was that last year you sent that to me? Yeah. Okay, so it's a no, it might have been this year. It was this year. Okay, you sent me the list. Yeah. Okay, I'll double check that. And you had an estimated cost for each. I do not on me. That's it. It was all included though. There, there was on that email. Okay. I said to you, it's all there. All right, and I should be able to find it. Yeah. Okay. I'll send it back over to you. Just no, in case. you don't have to. Why don't you give it? I'll find it. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Sure. Um, <clears throat> since we exceed the FDIC limit money market account, I plan to move 50% of the general fund portion that's in the money market over to the uh, checking account because that's now set up on ICS sweep, which means even if we go over 250,000, uh, they just continue to sweep monies out put it, invest it in FDIC insured accounts. So basically our checking account could go as high as we want it to go and we will always be insured. So I plan on moving $62,310 out of the money market and moving it over into the, uh, again, prim primary checking account. 
That way, the money market will dip below 250000 and those funds will continue to be FDIC insured. Is Council any questions or comments about my doing that? I'm well, just looking at the uh, last bank statement. You know, they roll into uh, the secondary account, and that was with the Raymond James Bank. Uh huh. 241000 <clears throat> so is that the account that's over the 250? Is that what you're Which account? The account that's over the 250,000 is the actual money market account. And at the end of February, that was $256,951.46. So the 62,000 will be coming out of there and going into the primary checking account. And it will be part of the ICS sweeps. So all those monies will obviously be insured, both in the money market. We will not exceed that now. We'll be $62,000 less than that. And uh, we'll cover our primary due to ICS and how that's set up. I guess what I've been following that the last couple of months, and I'm kind of curious on how it gets reported. This one here, um, the Raymond James account is set up. I'm guessing if it goes over the Raymond James amount and the other two things, then they'll, they'll set up another. Uh, ICS sweep account. Right, because they have a, a pool of banks that they invest in. Yes. But I was pleased, uh, you know, just the quick numbers uh, were. So you had about $18,000, $1,855 worth of interest this month between the primary money market and Star Ohio. Mm -hmm. It's a nice yield. <clears throat> New year, new money for us. Yes, that's working out well. And uh, so I'm happy that the, sorry, who was it? Uh, who was that gentleman who first suggested that? Uh, Andy, Andy Weimer. Weimer. Yes, I thanked Andy Weimer last year and I'll thank him again this year. He's probably <laughs> still listening, so we'll mm -hmm. say Thank you, Andy. <laughs> that was a good move on your part. I'm glad we got it set up so the village is doing much better on interest on Thank you. Thank you for uh, your work. That's right. So I'll plan on moving those monies uh, again out of money market and into primary checking. There's a point of order, uh, but uh, he doesn't really have to tell us. As long as he's moving monies within the, the investment policy range, he doesn't have to wait to this meeting to right. to have authorized movement of money. That's your we, responsibility. We, we will authorize that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as of the end of February, balance in the primary checking account two hundred seventy-two thousand oh eighty-nine point twenty. Money market two hundred fifty-six thousand nine fifty-one point forty-nine. Star Ohio one hundred six thousand eight hundred ten point thirty-five. Total. $635,851.04. Any questions or comments about balances? Okay, thank you. Uh, lease agreement, we spoke about that, so I have nothing there. And nothing on that. Okay, that's all that I have for finance. Okay, thank you. Is there any old business? Okay, we'll go to the audience, our vast Excuse audience. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jerry, I don't know if it's appropriate for this uh, purpose of discussion, but I would like you to put together a bid proposal for the upcoming project, <laughs> hinging, hinging upon that that's a done deal. We just haven't been notified yet. You mean the grant? For the grant, for the road project grant, so the is there a mechanism wherein the successful bidder uh, we can hold that successful bid so that when they give us the grant money we can move forward? Right. The way that this typically will work is number one, you have to advertise for bids. And I believe that Joshua is going to get in touch with you to get that set up. I recommended to Joshua that you advertise for bids in April. 
I'm not going to be here at April's meeting, but yeah, that's what I would like to have done. Right. I don't need to be here for that. No, you don't. What I you thought they wanted us to wait till July until we were sure we had the money. Right. What this is, uh, and I've done this all the years and I've done grants in Burbank, I always advertise early because what you want to do, once you get the advertised bids and then they submit the bids to you, uh, it's a good idea to have your bidder locked in so that when monies become available in July, he can begin construction in July, right? Okay. Otherwise, they're going to have their books filled. Right, and they'll go right. through the winter like we've been doing and, and they'll finish we're going up. to end up with somebody we don't want. <laughs> so this option allows you to lock in. And there's contract. no liability on that one in, in the case no. you don't get the money. Good. We'll handle that in the, in the bid language. Right. And Engineering Associates does that for us. Right. That's part of their yeah. service. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. So has Joshua gotten with you on yet? Or not, not yet. Okay, not he yet. will. I mean, we've talked about it in as a working force, but I had mm -hmm. the opportunity to talk to you. Josh was with Engineering Associates. That's correct. Oh. The other the other thing I want to clarify now, you approve <clears throat> doing the Parkway Path project. Joel put me on there as a signatory. It should be you. But am I authorized to tell him we're going to go ahead with that project and ask him to provide a signatory page for you, Mayor, that you're the signatory for the village. Understand what I'm saying? Just have it with just your signature and trust you to not screw us up. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, what? should I? Should I trust him? <laughs> what do you think? I can, I can tell it. You can, can sign it if you, if you, if they're, if they let you go, just your signature, you can sign it. Okay. All right. We used to, Keith used to sign some stuff, but he'd ask for so thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll Who's give him the verbal authorization to move forward and ask him to send me a signatory page for you. Yeah, and now as far as that grant's concerned, because it is your first one, I do want you to follow Josh's guidance on that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I will be paying attention. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the uh, confidence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, is there any other old business? Okay, we'll go to the audience. Al, would you have? Do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, guys, good time hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> democracy. Is this one all you guys? <laughs> it's democracy. <It's> <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, did you have anything? I just no, I appreciate you all very much. Thank you, Kelly. You are so nice to us. Ed? Other than uh, more comfortable chairs. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cushy ones in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think you guys would want to sit up front. I put the cushy ones in the back. Actually, yeah, they're all up here, so if you want to write it. You can change so your long. residency and join Castle. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, <laughs> now, thank you for all that you guys did. It's very time consuming, as you can tell us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, do we have any new I, I just have one thing. Bud had brought it to my attention that the flag up at um, Bungalow Bay was tattered. Uh, so I do have a flag, and this is a different agreement here, a different arrangement, I guess. But this flag was um, a veteran's flag. It was uh, not a resident, but it's a flag from a service member, Lewis Gerald Jerry Murtock who was in the intelligence department in the U.S. Army in the 60s, and he passed away in 1994. So I did purchase a flag from his uh, sister, and I will put that flag up in our village on Bungalow Bay. It's a little bit smaller than the flag that's currently up there, but it was uh, honored to a service member. So that's nice. It. Any other new business? Okay, then we need one more motion. Please. Second. Oh, what? 
Shoot, somebody did it. Were you not done? I heard a second. I heard a second. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're done. We're out of here. <laughs> you know.